So you guys uh, have been telling me that there's a lot of awareness in the community. This isn't a population that has to be um, educated. They're living with the effects, the downside environmental effects every day. So is it in the power of individual communities to, well, at least mitigate? They can't necessarily fix the world, but can you start in your neighborhood and start turning things around, and how? Absolutely. Um, what I think that that's a, a great example that we just saw, which was planting trees, gardens, um, things that are green, things that are help mitigate carbon in the air. But another important thing that I, I want to flag for the Latino community, and really anybody who's impacted and who's concerned about the environment, is the role of the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA. Uh, right now, they currently uh, have a mandate to regulate greenhouse gases, which is uh, some of the you know, more dangerous gases, especially to the Latino community. Uh, and that, uh, that authority is really going to be under pressure, especially from the incoming uh, Republican majority in the House, uh, which includes some uh, people who uh, deny that climate change is even a problem. And they have vowed to attack the power of the EPA. Uh, and I think that's something that communities are going to need to mobilize against and really make their voices heard that you know, this is something that they, they will not accept, that they want to protect their communities uh, and they want to protect the, the health of their children and their neighbors. And from the civic engagement point of view, at the community level, there are a lot of things that we can do. Proposition 23 in California and saying no to Proposition 23 was a clear message and the Latino community play an important role saying no to push back on, 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 on this kind of legislations. I mean, uh, when there are regional or a state a, a pieces of legislation that are against the, the values and the future of, of, of a green economy, I think the Latino community at the local level, the voters can play a central role voting and supporting policies that are good for our communities, that are good for the environment, and that are good for the economy. I think it's incumbent upon us, uh, 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 environmental organizations like, such as the Sierra Club and also your, your groups, uh, uh, to let the, uh, the uh, Latino voters know who is um, working for the polluters and who is working against the polluters. Uh, because in many instances, they're given this false choice. They said, OK, if you're going to have a job, I'm sorry, but there's going to be pollution, and you're going to be sick. Um, if there's not going to be any pollution, then there's not going to be any jobs. But that's the choice that's offered workers around the world, and as in the United States, low-income workers yes, especially are offered that Yes, and that is, that is not uh, the trend of a civilized of a civilized country. It's a false choice, because you can have both. And I, see, I think that uh, the voters, especially out west, are realizing that they, they can, yes, they can have both a clean job where the, 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 uh, the worker doesn't, doesn't get sick. Uh, but it's also, as I was saying, incumbent upon us to make clear who are those who are working for the polluters and who are those who are working to have a clean environment and a clean job. And uh, once they, they're educated in that respect, I think gonna have a, they're going to have a, a much better, they're going to be in a much better position to make a, ch uh, a choice. In a neighborhood like the one we just saw, which has one of the busiest highways in America, rolling right through the middle of it, the Brooklyn Queens Expressway, belching out uh, exhaust from thousands and thousands of trucks and uh, heavy vehicles and private cars all day, all night, every day. Those people can't pick up and move, but maybe there are approaches that will help them find green jobs, a different kind of green job, rebuilding the world they've got <clears throat> instead of thinking about some bright future. Uh, aren't, aren't there a lot of jobs in retrofitting, in making the places they live better places to live, cleaner, more efficient, more decent places? But there's another factor involved in here. It's called fighting back. And uh, we've seen many examples throughout the country where fighting back is really effective. For instance, the uh, ladies of Poder in Austin, Texas, they took on the five largest oil companies in the world and beat them. They actually shut down this uh, uh, facility of 52 uh, um, storage tanks that were spewing the most horrendous uh, chemicals you can imagine, and they were doing it legally. So these two ladies just uh, got together, started asking the community, 
nosebleeds, headaches, dizziness, everybody, everybody had the same symptoms. They thought it was a, puni a punishment of God because they did something wrong. No, it was not. It was ExxonMobil, it was Chevron, and it was Shell that were actually poisoning them. They fought back and they won, they won the case and they shut down the facility. So there's another component to, yes, being educated and planting trees and being green and all that. It's just, you also need to fight back against the polluters. Well, I think that the, uh, we're starting from a very solid base here. Uh, the fact that uh, I would say 95, depending on the, on the uh, poll that you, that you uh, check, but uh, between 85 and 90 percent of Latinos, global warming is a fact. It's not a theory that, uh, or, some, or something that needs to be debated. It's, it's something that we need to deal with. First of all, because they know very well that the, uh, the uh, uh, ethnic, ethnic minorities and uh, the countries where they come from will, will suffer the worst part of uh, global warming. That on one hand. And on the other hand, this, uh, the, the difference between why is it that the, this uh, vast majority of, uh, of Latinos believe in, in global warming as compared to the general population where barely 50% would tell you the global warming is actually taking place. Uh, the reason is because uh, Latinos usually stay in touch with their communities, with the, the countries they come from. And in those countries, global warming is a fact. It's not something to be debated. And let's face it, if you're hammering uh, shingles onto a roof in, uh, in Georgia or picking crops in the Imperial Valley, the fact that it's, during the hottest days, 105 instead of 90. 90 was hot enough and the work was hard enough, but now that it's 105 instead, and likely to be for days at a time, that's real. You are working outdoors. You are working in the environment. You do know when a month's worth of rain falls in two hours and then it doesn't rain again for another month. Um, our workers are concentrated in industries where they're likely to notice <laughs> that these things are happening. Mm -hmm. We have the highest percent us in the highest concentration of the most vulnerable workers in the nation. A lot of those workers are undocumented workers. As an organization, we have a serious commitment with these workers and to make sure that the labor rights, the human rights, and their civil rights are enforced. And I think the green jobs offer a new opportunity to provide better and safer jobs. Not necessarily union jobs, we encourage uh, joining unions and come under the, the umbrella of the unions. But at the same time, the, the, the kind of jobs that we're promoting within the, the green jobs uh, environment, I think, are safer and are better jobs for all workers, particularly for the most vulnerable workers. So a union job, for example, might give a worker the, the power to negotiate work conditions that are, are less dangerous or less harmful. Exactly. We have the infrastructure uh, to make sure that their, their labor rights at least are respected, and that their human rights are respected, that their civil rights are respected. We constantly are fighting to, to make sure that, uh, that we're moving in that direction. And we can look at the historical contributions of the labor movement uh, overall. Why do we have weekends? Why do we have a 40-hour uh, work uh, week? Why do we have pensions? Why do we have a lot of the basics that we need to continue pushing to make sure that all workers, especially now undocumented workers, get access to? So uh, here you are with a population that's on board, as Javier notes, as the polls are telling you, as Hector uh, quoted from his earlier study. How do you mobilize? Well, I'd like to point out that Latinos, uh, particularly Latino immigrants, are some of the original environmentalists. Uh, uh, Cesar Chavez led a, led a movement of United Farm Workers during the 1960s when the environmental movement was still really in its fledgling form. And uh, it was part of, of, of their efforts that helped to ban a particularly dangerous pesticide on our fruits and vegetables called DDT. Uh, and that particular fight is noted, at, I guess, in, in the larger uh, mainstream environmental movement as sort of the beginning. Uh, you know, the, the farm workers fought alongside uh, the first environmentalists, but they're not often recognized uh, as being part of this community. So Latinos are no strangers to, um, you know, to, to, to being part of this fight. And I, and I think that they're ready, and I think that the elections, especially the results that we saw in the West, were environmental champions, Harry Reid, Barbara Boxer, Jerry Brown, uh, Proposition 23 uh, was defeated. I think that they're ready 
to, uh, to rise up and to actually um, speak with their votes and also speak with their consumer dollars because they're also very environmentally conscious consumers. I um, am so old that I actually interviewed Cesar Chavez on, on this subject. <laughs> and uh, he, he pointed out pretty early on that he was noticing uh, nerve damage, that he was noticing cognitive difficulties, that he was uh, noticing uh, eye, ear, nose, and throat problems as the amount of agricultural chemicals uh, used in the fields was rising, and he had worries about the groundwater. And this was 30 years ago. Um, he was already looking forward to that being the next fight after organizing. Yes, we got uh, the hours, we have the wages, we have the contracts with the growers. Our next fight is how to make the fields a safer place to be and a safer place uh, to work. That consciousness, though, is always portrayed, as Javier mentioned, as something that's going to cost you. And as you three fellas deliver that message to Latino communities around the country, there will be other voices in the culture saying, yeah, but your food's going to be more expensive. Uh, the home heat, your he he home heating is going to go up, I'm sorry. I, I know you're already living pretty close to the edge as it is. Uh, the gas for your car is going to go up if we try to make burning it uh, a less poisonous activity. There's, they have the ability, the money, for big, big messaging that sets the tone for the debate, don't they, Javier? Yes, they, they, it is very scary sometimes seeing these uh, oil companies. They have so much money. It's no, it's no longer called money anymore. It's called power. Um, but uh, as, uh, as we have mentioned a, a number of times, Proposition 23 went down in flames, mm -hmm. even though all these very rich oil companies were pumping millions of dollars into deceiving, especially Latinos in, in California, that this is going to cost you your job. You're not going to have job any, a job anymore if, you, if Proposition 23 goes down. When it's the complete opposite. And what happened, Latinos went uh, to vote en mass, and then it was 60 to 40. It was a complete rout. And we should be very proud of, uh, of our community out in California because it was not only Pro 23, it was uh, Governor, uh, Governor Brown, it was uh, Senator Boxer, and so forth. They, they, they know what they're doing. They, and they, I think they're much more aware now of the enormous voting power that they have. 